eggplant. Here are some live examples showing how to bring together the concepts of variables, lists, logic, repeat loops, and run options, global properties, for the purpose of handling duplicated elements or for scrolling on your site. In this first example, I'm interested in handling the elements duplicated under the shipping address and billing address sections of the UI. I have two identical city fields and state dropdowns, but I'm interested in the billing address area only. If the billing address instances reliably appear second on the screen, then using the every image location function is an option for working specifically with the second instance. This first example shows how to interact with the second instance of the city field using a captured image. Note how I've encompassed only the city label in my captured image and have moved the hotspot to the relative location of the field. This is important because every image location returns the hotspot locations of the images used within the function. After clicking on the appropriate instance of the city field, I'll type a value into the field. The wait time between the click event and the typing event is controlled by the remote work interval. Here's a similar example using the ordinal, the second, and leveraging an OCR search. The hotspot location of an OCR search defaults to the center of the text on the screen. In this next example, I'll handle the duplicated elements by setting up a search rectangle that limits the search to the billing address area of the screen. I'm making the assumption that the desired city field will always be present between the billing address header and the shipping type header, so I've captured images of those headers to help me set up the search rectangle. I can store the image rectangle locations into variables, as shown here. I'm creating a rectangle based on the bottom left corner of the billing address header, the width of the set screen, and the top edge of the shipping type header. I'm setting variable my rectangle to the defined rectangle, and then referencing my rectangle using the search rectangle search property. The yellow highlight shows the position of the search rectangle on the screen. Eggplant is searching for the city field image only within this rectangle. Here's another example of using a search rectangle to interact with a duplicated element. In this example, I want to select a specific radio button, but only if the radio button hasn't been selected already. I'm storing the image rectangle for the OCR search for the label, 3-day ground. I have a conditional statement that checks for an unselected radio button directly to the left of the label. If the unselected radio button is found in that small search rectangle, Eggplant will click at the location of the radio button. Search rectangles are great for dealing with duplicated elements, but they're also great for making sure elements appear where expected. In this example, I'm setting up a search rectangle based on the position of the drop-down menu I'm expanding. This way, I can be sure I'm clicking on a state name that appears in the drop-down and not elsewhere on the screen. Now it's time for some examples of scrolling. I want to interact with the Submit button, which is farther down the page. I'm using a repeat loop to repeatedly send the page down key until the submit button appears. I have a conditional statement that checks how many times I've scrolled and stops the execution if I've scrolled too many times. Here's a similar example for mobile, using the swipe up command to scroll down the page. I'm using the swipe speed global property to slow down the swipe events to make sure I don't scroll past the thing I'm trying to look for. This next example begins by scrolling down the page to reveal some checkboxes. I've changed the timing of the repeat loop a bit. I've added the wait for search property with a value of zero to force Eggplant to scan for the image only once, which will speed up the execution of the repeat loop. I've also added a short wait command into the repeat loop to allow the UI to settle into place after the scrolling event. Note that this example uses scroll wheel down in order to scroll the page. Next, I'm storing the locations of all of the unchecked boxes into a variable using the every image location function. 
The goal of this code is to check all of the checkboxes as quickly as possible. So I'm using the Remote Work Interval global property to decrease the wait between each click event to just a tenth of a second. The repeat loop will then iterate through the list of checkbox positions, clicking at each of them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Good luck on your certification exam!